All right, and Crane. This is the um, setup. And right, there's my fridge. So it's a standard under counter fridge, um, which I picked up cheap. And I then removed the insides. <coughs> so you can see there's no trays in there. But most importantly, the biggest one was to cut out here and literally just cut that out with a um, what's it saw jigsaw and then that gives you enough clearance at the front of the bit here so that's 30 litre fermenter and at the moment I've got it set up with this sort of airlock so just going down into a, a jug of um, sterilised solution. And the reason I did that is because um, the last time I brewed this one uh, it all kind of effervesced up through the airlock. So that's nice and easy, keeps it all clean. Um, this is the thermo well, so that's a stainless steel rod about 10-11 inches long, sealed at the bottom end and sanitised. I just push it down through this grommet which is standard airlock grommet and that fits in nicely with that inside the thermo well i put um, cooking oil and that just provides a better thermal bridge between the probe and the probe is on the far end of this um, lead and that probe then runs out through here and down into this system. So this is an ink bird. I'll send you links for all of these bits and pieces. So you've got the, um, the thermometer lead and that runs down and it comes into here and the top number is the, um, the temperature that I've set it to and the bottom number is the temperature that it is currently or it might be the other way around. And you can see there's um, a bit for heating and a bit for cooling. The clever bit is that this is powered. So there's a lead here, which goes up to plug socket. But the smart bit is that the other lead here runs up to a dual socket setup, which comes with the Inkbird. One of those is the um, power for the fridge. So when this needs cooling, so the, the above temperature gets above the guide temperature, it kicks in the cooling system. So it switches this on, it switches the fridge on until the temperature is reached. And the other one is a heater, which I have installed. And that goes da 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 da. I cut a slot in the door so it doesn't hold the door open. And that goes in and it sits at the back there. And this is a simple one kilowatt heater. And again, I'll send you the link for that. And that just sits there. I've literally just got that sat on the shelf. So it's, it shuttles between the two. I leave the fridge set on about a four. Um, that seems to work fine. And it just moves itself. Um, but critically, because the temperature is measured from inside the beer, if you've got a lot of fermentation activity and, that, and that's enough to push up the temperature inside here by two or three degrees sometimes, that it will keep it down to the temperature that you've set on the inkbird. And that seems to be fairly critical. And then what I do, started at about 17 and a half, let it go for uh, a few days, whatever. I mean, this time it's been going all week at 17 and a half. And I got back um, yesterday and I bumped that up to 23. So that's now brought this up to 20, 23 degrees, which will perform the diacetyl rest. So it'll encourage the yeast to eat up all of the diacetyl that's in there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the temperature on the ink bird down to 15. Once it's at 15, I'm going to dry hop um, and hope that that won't the lower temperature should mean that I don't get any hop creep and then I'll leave the hops in there and then I'll finally cold crash it down to about three or four degrees for 24, 36 hours. That should clear any of the suspended stuff within the beer 
and then I'm ready to transfer to the bottling vessel and then bottle it from there. So, and this one's a mountain IPA, which is the sort of um, West Coast version of a New England IPA. Cool, uh, hit me about with questions.